Good day viewers, uh, we have uh, uh, with us uh, um, an officer from the Toronto Police and we will go over a few questions that are uh, uh, relevant and um, that would uh, help uh, for the peace on the community and on the uh, streets of Toronto and that's the main purpose of this brief interaction. Um, welcome uh, uh, sir. Thank you for having uh, me. Yeah. And uh, the, the most important question is like I want to start off by like we're looking at statistics uh, and we noticed that you know uh, members from the Hindu community uh, they are the least in prisons the number in prisons is statistically almost insignificant that's the feedback what I got from the Federation of, uh, uh, of Hindu temples so uh, that I think is a very positive statement that the, the, the community is peaceful and it is trying to blend with the objectives of the city and the police in trying to be good citizens. That's very nice of them and I'm happy and proud of that. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I would want to address a few things like, you know, what exactly is hate speech and what is uh, hate crime? Mm -hmm. Could you, in briefest way, can you explain the difference between these two things? Sir? There is a big mis misunderstanding about hate crime. So under the criminal code, which is uh, a book that we use, which had all, all the laws, there's no such thing as hate crime. Oh. Yes. So everybody, uh, you know, you always hear, well, why didn't police charge this person with hate crime? No, there's no such thing as a hate crime. However, there are three specific offenses uh, pertaining to hate uh, that fall under the criminal code. Uh, for example, uh, advocating genocide. Okay. Uh, public incitement of hatred, as well as willful promotion of hatred. Okay. Yeah. And investigating, uh, we don't, the Toronto police, the, most police services won't, won't, we don't call it hate crime. We'll call, call it hate uh, motivated crime um, or hate bias crime. And for us to investigate incidents like this is very, uh, could be very complicated. Because police services in Canada need to balance uh, uh, whether you like it or not, right? Uh, people's uh, freedom of speech to what natural offenses. So, for example, um, in order for us to investigate a hate bias uh, or hate motivated crime, two things need to happen. One, a criminal uh, offense needs to actually take place. Okay. So, unfortunately, it is not against the law to say, I hate this person, I hate this religion, I hate this group. It's protected. But if a criminal offense took place, for example, let's just say somebody damaged uh, a temple uh, because they do not like that you know particular group, that will fall under um, you know uh, what we would investigate as a hate motivated or hate biased crime. Mm. So what would happen in cases like that is once uh, you know we investigate it and we arrest uh, the suspect or suspects uh, upon conviction, uh, if we have evidence, we will present the uh, crown attorney will present the evidence to the judge upon sentencing. So mm -hmm. what the judge would do is use that as an aggravating factor uh, when it comes to sentencing. So normally, let's just say somebody would get one year uh, for an offense, they'd get more if, if the Crown can prove that there was hate motivation or hate bias involved in that criminal offense. So uh, basically what you're trying to say, sir, is that this is kind of an um, uh, interaction between um, once uh, freedom of speech to say what they want to say. Yes. And the other side of the story, sir, is that how, is, how does it work if uh, one person's freedom of speech is impinging on the uh, other person's belief system? Now, this, uh, how does the whole dynamics work in this case? Sir? See, it's no matter how distasteful it is when we when we watch uh, some of the hateful comments uh, or, you know, uh, or, or, or what we see sometimes, it is protected under the Constitution, mm. believe it or not. Uh, you know, and, and, and it's uh, us, up to us as a society to, you know, not, not look at it and make it known. But under the Constitution in Canada, yes, you know, it, it may hurt uh, the feelings of uh, people, but uh, they are... Uh, protected hmm. under the constitution. No, I mean, just on a philosophical note, for example, now there is hate speech today. Like, for example, they say something like, you know, 
we see a few instances in Canada. Mm -hmm. Now, that could be a precursor for uh, potential uh, physical violence down the line. Like, you know, does it not sound like uh, this is, uh, we are actually uh, encouraging a future crime to happen by allowing uh, this kind of conversation to operate under the banner of free speech? I, I agree. And that's, uh, you know, what police services will look at uh, when they're investigating any hate speech to see if there's any incitement. So what happens as well, to balance, in situations like that, um, to balance uh, the uh, the concept, uh, the people's uh, f uh, freedom of speech, is once we investigate this, we'll refer it to the Ministry of Attorney General. And with their consent is when we'll lay charges uh, as far as any uh, hate bias or motivated crime. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, I think uh, this, of course, is a very sensitive subject in, 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 in which involves uh, uh, freedom of uh, speech as well as, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, so thanks for uh, no, clarifying this, uh, very important. And uh, the reason why I opened up this topic is I've seen uh, people, they bottle up. Somebody is saying something and they bottle up, they uh -huh. bottle up, bottle mm -hmm. up. And one day then they release it and that lands the person who released in trouble yes. <laughs> rather than the person who has been studying up all along. You, yes. you know what I mean? I agree. <laughs> yeah, so. And, you know, it's, uh, the Toronto Police Service recognizes that hate incident is an underreported crime. So we urge people, please report any incident that happens. Like, oh. whether these are crime or not, at least we have statistics. So, uh, you know, when... When you're reporting it to us and we put in reports, we can even show the government, look, this community has been, you know, there's been incidents against this particular community this many times. We need to do something. Wow. So I really urge everybody to please report it to the police. Okay. Any incidents. Fantastic. Yeah. I think this is, uh, this piece of information is, you know, statistically very important. Like, mm -hmm. you know, you don't need to get bottled up. No. That's the key thing, you know. Like when you hear something, you don't need to get bottled up. You don't need to get angry within yourself and one day then suddenly release it in an outburst and cause you put yourself in trouble or anything like that. The best thing is to on and off, if you see something, even if you think it's not going to result in any tangible action, it's a good thing to report it to the police. Is that yes, correct, sir? That is very correct, yes. Fantastic. Yes. Uh, so once again, such a pleasure to have you at our studio and I'm sure uh, we will call upon you in future yes. to... Uh, to take your inputs and help uh, for uh, anything uh, that would benefit uh, the community and help in better police-community relationships. Thank you very much.